it's a struggle in tech to, just to keep up. I've watched a lot of people kind of like age out of the industry just because they fail to keep up, and then people are other people that are keeping up just blast right past them and take their jobs. Like it's it's kind of a sad thing to watch, but it happens all the time. Yeah, it's a fast pace. <laughs>
And I just, I loved doing it. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot of stuff. And so I just kind of started finding people that needed websites and everything for like the next year. And then when I was 17, a local software company, kind of a weird story how I got there, but a friend of mine ended up calling me and saying, you know, this guy has an idea for some software and he just wanted to talk to somebody to build it. And so I went in there and sat down and he had a stack of paper he'd printed out. It was like a half inch thick and he wanted to build, um, like software for tire and automotive businesses and like where you go get your car serviced yeah. and buy tires mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and at the, at that time it was, none of it was online. It didn't even exist at the time. And so it was pretty revolutionary at the time. And so, so at 17, I said, okay, let's do it and I'll help you do that. And I built that software for the next 10 years. I helped them build that. And over those years, I, I kind of built a couple of my own businesses on the side and helped them build stuff and just kind of went from there. And so, but we all kind of started at 17. So That's I guess really 16. So. Yeah. Well, I don't think many people can say that they started their career yeah. that young. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I've been fortunate because it's, it's like my wife always, well, not anymore. She's kind of given up, but she's <laughs> always telling me like, why don't you get a hobby? Cause I don't, I don't really have a hobby besides this. And, and I always tell her like, I like, this is my hobby. Like when I'm not working, I program, I find something else to do just cause it's fun. Right. And I like, I like to learn and I like to like software development and technology moves so fast. There's always something new to learn. And so it's always interesting and always, it never gets stagnant at all. Right. So, <laughs> well, I like that point. So tell me, because you've been programming since the early days mm -hmm. of the internet. Tell me about the biggest challenges you've faced as you've seen um, the internet and the digital world grow. Yeah. The hardest thing is just keeping up. Like things, you kind of always, especially in software development, there's constantly new ways to do things and new, you know, new languages and new technologies to run things. And so you have to, you have to kind of keep an eye on what's coming because what you're doing sometimes becomes obsolete without you really even being able to switch to something else. And so it's, it's, it's a struggle to keep up just with your education, but also like, like the platform that we build, the language that it's built in and the technology that it runs on, we have to keep that updated as well and constantly be changing things to keep up with all the new versions and the new technologies and ways that it works. Yeah. And so it's a struggle in tech to, just to keep up. I've watched a lot of people kind of like age out of the industry just because they fail to keep up and then people are other people that are keeping up just blast right past them and take their jobs like it's it's kind of a sad thing to watch but it happens all the time yeah it's a fast-paced so, world yeah. so switching gears just a little bit tell me how you feel that your experience with keeping up with the new advancements <laughs> in digital world and everything has prepared you for the work you're doing at quadra um so we we try with everything we do with quadra we try to keep it cutting edge. We try to, to make it so that any, any new technologies that we find that we feel will be advantageous to our customers or even to people, you know, our, our staff, we try to keep, uh, basically make that available and build it into what we're doing so that people can do whatever they, whatever is the latest and greatest, they have that accessible to them. Yes. And so we don't want our software to become, you know, old and stagnant and to where people, people feel like there are better options out there. Right. And so it, it allows us to keep new and fresh to them. So, yeah, absolutely. So I do want to switch gears a little bit and have you tell me about maybe your family. I know you have an amazing yeah, wife. Just I tell do. us, tell us a little bit about your personal Good. life. <coughs> so I've been married. I just had my 17 year anniversary uh, about two, three weeks ago. And so my wife, uh, her name's Leslie. And yeah, like I say, we, so we met, we knew each other in high school, but we kind of just knew of each other. We, I, I think when we left high school, we had maybe said one or two sentences to each other. <laughs> and when I left high school, I was engaged to somebody else. When she left high school, she was engaged. We're in the same grade. So when we left high school, we were both engaged to other people. And like, we always laugh because in our, our yearbooks, we, like I wrote in hers, you know, have a great summer. Good luck with, you know, your, your husband. And she wrote basically the same thing in mine. <laughs> and we ended up getting married. <laughs> and then we, we were in the same senior prom group with the people we were with at the time and didn't even realize it till like two or three years into being married. And That's so, so funny. And so, but we got married. Yeah. I'm 38 now. So but we were 21. Um, and then we just kind of had fun for nine years. Didn't worry about having kids and, and I was building business and, and kind of just getting my career established. And so we didn't worry about, you know, moving on to having kids for, for that, those nine years and traveled a lot and 
kind of just got established, you know, as, as a married couple. And then, uh, then we had our daughter, Brielle, and she's eight now. And when she was about six years old, we adopted our son, Cam. And, and that's, he is so oh, cute. So adorable. I love that kid. And, uh, and so we just, just have the two kids and that's enough for us. <laughs> so, but yeah, we, my wife is in, uh, in politics and so she's, uh, in Utah politics and kind of working her way up there and kind of finding where she wants to, where she wants to land and where she fits. And so, but she's done amazing things, even not having a position. So yeah. she's, she's gotten millions of dollars for different cities in our County and she's, she's done amazing things. So. Yeah. Well, I think you have a really impressive family. So I just wanted yeah. to touch on that and let people that. know a little bit about them. So going back to your career, you mentioned that when you were a young adult, you were building a few businesses. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I, while I was working at the, the tire and automotive software company, I, uh, I had a friend give me a call cause he had been talking to somebody at the, at the jail here in town. And he had overheard that it was when they had built our new jail. And he had overheard that they were talking about ways to pay for the jail and like operating a jail was, was extremely expensive. And so there's, there's a law in Utah that allows jails to charge inmates for their stay at the jail. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah. And most people didn't, and he didn't either, but this friend of mine was kind of an idea guy. And so he, he heard that and came to me and he's like, I think we should look at a way to help them handle that and build inmates and track everything. And so... So I built this uh, software. It's called Pay for Stay, is what it's called. And so it it does kind of tracks inmates and and then tracks what time while they're in jail they're billable uh, to the jail, and then it handles the you know all basically charging the inmates and taking payment and stuff. And and then we had a few other kind of money transfer services to help people get money to inmates in the jail and everything. And so so I built that. I think it's about twelve. 12 years ago. Do they still use that ago. software yeah. over there? Uh, we have a few counties in the, in the state of Utah that still use it. And so the, that legislation kind of fell out of favor. And so a lot of people stopped billing the inmates. And so we lost most of the clientele, but it kind of runs itself. It's one of those businesses that I really don't do anything with, but it just runs. Yeah. We talk so, about automation. A lot. <laughs> exactly. It's one of those. Well, <laughs> and, that's, and that's my whole, I, I love automation. I think that was probably the business I think that sold me on it the most is because I, I kind of built this service out that people would use and I didn't have to do anything and I would just make money. And so, so that autom automation and just the, yeah. the ability to, to, to make money with kind of minimal effort. Yeah, absolutely. And it builds a lot into the kind of the quadra ethos and what we, what we offer people. So, so I did that. And then just a lot of little things I it's, I mean, I got all kinds of weird stuff, but <laughs> I ran a cell phone company for like a cell phone provider for a while, cell phone plans for kids, um, did that for a few years and ended up like we partnered with, oh, what's his name? He's like a former NBA star. Oh, we, really? Yeah. There's a, um, there's that TV show blackish, mm -hmm. uh, the, the youngest son on there, he was our brand ambassador. Oh, and so really? we wow. traveled around with him and, um, Meta World Peace. That's the that's the NBA star. So he was our he was a partner with us and went a bunch of trade shows and stuff with them and had a lot of fun doing that one and just kind of it didn't end up growing how we needed it to grow and so we ended up shuttling that one and so I've done that and just a bunch of little things here and there. Built, yeah. I built like loan application software for uh, PPP loans when they did the during COVID when they did PPP loans. I built some software for that to help people apply for loans through banks. It's and so, like I said, I love the stuff. So if any opportunity I find, I'll try and build something for it. So. Right. Well, our listeners are probably catching on that you're quite the entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what it is that you love so much about entrepreneurship. Um, I kind of just like creating things. Like it's, and then the being able to create something, but then finding a way to monetize it. It's it's that step that I, I love that challenge because if you can create something that even one person wants to pay you money for you've, you've created something special in my opinion. And so you've, and you've gone over a really big hurdle to just get even that first customer. Yeah. And so, and you kind of, you kind of prove that, you know, you, you know what you're doing and you created something that has value to other people. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that aspect of it. Like I like building things. I, I probably drives my wife crazy because I, everything I do, I'm like, how can I make money doing this? <laughs> and, uh, but I probably built, you know, 
20 different businesses and shuttled most of them, which I think is how most entrepreneurs are. But I just love creating it and trying to figure it out. Like right. it's, it's why I love programming because it's, I basically problem solve all day long. And, and I love that aspect of it because it's challenging. And yes. I just, it's, you have to be real creative with figuring out who your customer is and what they want. So, yeah, <coughs> absolutely. So tell me about how you got started with Quadra. Maybe how you met John, because I know that's kind of where the story starts. Yeah, so, so I, John and I, I have a, we have a, an interesting uh, kind of shared past that we didn't realize. And we both were in, interested in internet marketing kind of in the earlier days and uh, people, it was, it was mainly like information products and people were right. selling, a lot of it was helping people learn how to make money online mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and so we, there was this place called the Warrior Forum where, where people would sell products and, and then they would teach you about content marketing right. and advertising and things. And, and him and I both were on that. And John had run a number of his own stores and then decided to go into teaching. And so he had a, he had a course he called it OPA. It was OPA, one product away. They teach everybody you're one product away from success. And I saw an ad on, I think it might have been Facebook. Yeah, it was Facebook for his course. Mm -hmm. And I kind of had an idea already of what it was he was teaching. And so I sent him a message. I didn't know him at the time. I sent him a message and just asked, like, is this the kind of stuff that you're teaching? And it was that, the stuff that I had learned on the Warrior Forum. Yeah. And, and he said that it was. And so I, kind of just got talking and then I ended up talking to him a bit about kind of my background I'm telling you yeah. here and and so we kind of just talked a little bit for a few days and then I didn't hear from him for I think it was for like another month or two and then he gave me a call one day and he's like I have an idea for kind of this platform to help people find and sell products online because him having done the running stores for himself and doing it entirely on his own yeah he figured out real quick, you just kind of run yourself into the ground because it's a lot of work without having tools. Right. And, and so, and then I talked to him about that. I love, you know, automation and yes. building tools to help simplify things for people. And so it kind of just clicked that his experience with marketing and product sales and my experience with software and automation and kind of building technology those together, we could build something to help people do what we both wanted to do, that right. was make money online and, and find products and that kind of stuff. And so we just started kind of meeting up every a few days a week and writing out a lot of notes and kind of fleshing out the idea. And then we just started kind of building, um, call it an MVP, your, your minimum viable product, kind of what you can launch that's the minimum number of things that people will actually want to use. Yeah. And so we just kind of started from there. And then we, we found clients, um, marketing clients, and, and John would run their, run their stores and run ads for them and everything. And, and then I would build little tools and things to help, help their stores. And that's how we found Brian, because he was a client of ours. Yes. And mm -hmm. we ran his store. And he was, he was building these, or doing these signs that he'd personalize and put people's names on them. But he would, every single sign he had to do by hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, it, and John is amazing at ads. And so we nearly killed Brian. <laughs> like we, we did talk about that yeah. in our episode with Brian. Yeah, I have, has a little PTSD. Yeah, I had this picture on my, on my phone that, that I always show everybody that's Brian's wood shop with, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not mm -hmm. with piles of, <laughs> of, uh, signs just drying outside. There was like 300 signs and every single one, they had to, I think they like dipped it in some kind of oil and, and, uh, they made this wood look aged and then they yeah put the names on it by like in his program one by one by hand. Mm -hmm. And, and so that was kind of our first taste of automation because we wanted him to succeed with tons of orders, but in order to do that, we had to make it so he could actually like have a life and sleep and right. see his family. It kind of was a turning point for you yeah. guys. Yeah. So I, I built some tools for Brian to automate the, the production process of mm -hmm. his signs. And then that was kind of, so that the, actually the technology behind that is actually still uh, a lot of what powers our back end, our platform right now. And so just today actually in, uh, with our other developer, Keith, we were working on that piece and it's the same stuff that saved Brian's butt. And, but then, yeah, we, that's kind of where it all started. So we just kind of got that automation bug and figured out, I mean, Brian, 
helping Brian showed us that we could help somebody ramp up and scale up their store and still automate a lot of the pieces away. Yeah, absolutely. So, so maybe you've already touched on this a little bit, but what would you say when you very first heard John's idea, mm -hmm. what was the thing that caught your attention? Um, I mean, part of it's just that I love, I love building things. So <laughs> it's a new idea and it's always fun, yeah. but I like the idea of helping people. It's kind of touches on our, you know, our, our mission statement of, you know, helping them monetize their creativity. Yeah. I, having built, especially that jail software where I was able to help people simplify some things in their kind of their day-to-day -day operations that made their lives easier. Mm -hmm. And in turn with that business, it brought money in like revenue into the County. Yeah. So it was beneficial to them. And so I kind of had that bug of helping other people simplify and kind of generate revenue and make money. And yeah. so, and so, and I, and I loved the idea of, of bringing together the marketing pieces and the technology and, and just selling online and, and, but the biggest thing is just helping, helping people make money. It's, it's a right. lot of fun, uh, to, to find ways to help people out. Yeah. And so I'm kind of, that's kind of my, I like to help people in every aspect of my life. And this was a good opportunity to, to help them with their businesses. It so. is. I, I know I found it extremely rewarding. Yeah. So, um, one reason I was really excited to kind of get you on the podcast is because although you come from the world of digital, the digital world, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know that you really came from a product selling perspective until you got here. Would you say that's true or um, were you selling some physical product? I mean, I, I did, I got, I mean, I sold my mazes and right, right, right. floppy disks and CDs, but most of what I did with, with software was helping other people sell because like the tire and automotive software, it was it was helping stores sell their products and handle their marketing and do right. and kind of run, run their operations. Mm -hmm. And then the, and so I, I actually never, I don't think I really ever sold my own product, oddly enough, mm -hmm. but I helped a lot of people sell right. theirs. And mm -hmm. so I, I guess you could kind of say I was, but I've always had an interest in, in selling online. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've, I think I've kind of trended more towards service, like services as opposed to physical products. Right. And so, so now that you've kind of, I think it's interesting because John comes from that world mm -hmm. of selling pro on demand yeah. products and Brian came from the world of manufacturing yeah. his own products. What do you think is the most important thing for new sellers to know as someone who in the last I, I think, little bit has I, been learning this? Yeah, too? I think that the, there's a very common misconception with starting a business online where people, and a lot of it's because they're kind of sold on a lot of marketing and things like that, mm -hmm. that, that it's this, it's this very, very simple thing. It's not that it's not a traditional business. And right. that's what I want a lot of people to understand is this does take effort and it's, it's no different than running a brick and mortar business. You have to, you have to work at it and you yeah. have to focus on it and you have to give it time yes. to grow because you're not going to just run one ad on one product and I mean, you can and find your customer and just have this gigantic, this huge sales. It takes time and effort to find what it is that kind of dial in your offering and find right. your customers. And I think the biggest thing is, like I say, just understanding that it is a business. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not just the simple thing where you click a button and all the money comes in. That would be nice. But so what would you say to somebody who was interested in starting a business with Quadra? Um, Good question. Um, I would probably say just be consistent in your, in your effort and just understand that you, if you'd work on it, a, you know, some every single day or, or as much as you possibly can, you will see success. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just a process that you have to understand and you have to get kind of, get kind of consistency. <laughs> Try to think of what I would say without muttering through this, but yeah. I, consistency, consistency is, is key. Good. There yeah. we go. I think that's, that's been the, that's been the biggest struggle for a lot of people running their businesses is, is they, you know, they may launch one product, run one ad, not have success with that and say, well, this is too hard. Right. Which it's, it can be discouraging from that one, but then you just try another and you try another. And, and that's where a lot of the benefits of print on demand come in. Cause you don't have to buy a bunch of inventory, right. lose a bunch of money you can try a hundred designs at a time yeah. and there's, you're, you're really only out time. And then you find the one that, that some that work and then you just kind of focus on those. And, and then just a lot of actually John's original course, kind of one, 
the concept of his whole one product away course. Uh -huh. It's it's interesting. I don't know if John's ever talked to you about that. I haven't really heard too much about it. So his course, what he was actually teaching people. So he would, he would actually have, there were live events. People would come and, yeah, I knew that. and they would sit down and he would teach them like, this is like for like a week or two. And every day it was a couple hours, but he had this, he had this process that he would teach everybody. And it was actually like scheduled out like Monday, you'll do this and oh, Tuesday, okay. you'll do this and Wednesday, you'll do this. And I'll have to show you sometime yeah, because it's actually it. the way that we teach people. It's the exact same thing. And so it's the, you know, launching products and staying consistent. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, what is it that they call it? The I forget what the word what the what the word is they use for launching a certain number of products every mm -hmm. week. Yeah. But it's just consistency and, and maintaining kind of a process because mm -hmm. you'll yes. you'll get there as long as you do. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that all of us here at Quadra can attest to that that yeah. process works because that's the process that we've used. Mm -hmm especially like the three co-founders yeah. used to build yeah. your business. Yeah. And we, and we still, I mean, we run our own stores because we understand what it's like to be a seller mm -hmm. and we always want to understand what it's like to be a seller. And so in the software industry, they, they call it eating your own dog food or like we use our own product. We use our mark. We use the Quadra marketplace to sell our own products and, and to test new ideas and find what works because then we can take that and teach other people how to do it because we've proven that it works. Yeah, absolutely. So LPWs, that's what it yes, is. Yes, that's per the week. word. That's yeah, Sorry, that's I should have jumped in no, there. It's that's, a, that's the concept that came from John's, John's gotcha. education. So Yeah, we still use that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say that is Quadra's secret weapon, right? What sets Quadra apart from other POD companies um, in the industry? I think it's kind of what I just said. We we understand what it's like to be a seller. And so we're not just a company that bought a bunch of, you know, hardware to print t-shirts and stuff. And we're like, we want everybody to sell a bunch of t-shirts. Like our focus is on helping people do what it is that we've done ourselves and that we we've proven is possible with what we have to offer. And so that's why we do education and that's why we do our courses and, and we're, we're heavy on that because we want people to understand, like, there's a process that we have gone through and, and been successful in doing it. And we genuinely want other people to succeed at it as well. Yes. And so we, we, we invest a lot of our time just talking about how can we help sellers mm -hmm. make money yes. as opposed to just sitting back, figuring out how can we make money. Right. And mm -hmm. so and we try and save them money by charging less than everybody else because we want a focus to be on you know them our, our sellers making money rather yes. than them making us money and yeah. so well and i think that experience <clears throat> as sellers has made you guys all the more passionate about yeah. helping people and i think that really shines through through the work yeah. you do um so we're about to wrap up what is one thing that you're really looking forward to with the future at quadra um i'm excited to grow our team I think that's one of one of the things that I'm I'm really looking forward to. We have a we have an amazing team now, and and everybody that we we have had the the good fortune of hiring has been really really wonderful to work with. But we have so much that we want to do, and we we are we're excited to have all to be able to get the help that we need to basically to be able to bring all of our ideas like kind of make them all a reality. Oh yeah. And I mean we have. It's, it's frustrating to sit around sometimes for us and just look at all the things we want to do because we just we want to do it now because we're excited for what we have to offer. People. Yeah. And so I think we 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 have a, a very different product than everything everything that's out there right now, and we just we want to get it out to people as quickly as we can. Yeah, so. that's a great answer. So my last question <clears throat> is, what is the most <laughs> fulfilling me. part of doing work with Quadra for you? Um, I, I love seeing success stories, um, from our sellers. Like when we, when we launched our, our founders club, kind of our initial, uh, group of people that kind of came on early, it was amazing to see some of these people build a business. A lot of them had no idea what they were doing, like had never done it before. And we had a number of them that they got hundreds of orders or thousands of orders and did tens of thousands of dollars in sales just by kind of following what it was that we were yeah. teaching them. And so seeing people succeed at something 
that they, a lot of people think is not really possible because it, it seems like it's going to be a lot harder than we can make it. And right. so and kind of, kind of seeing when it clicks for people of like, this is something I can do. Yes. And, and seeing that, that success that they have is it's, it's very intoxicating for me to, to see other people succeeding. Cause that's the whole reason we do this. So, so seeing people do it is, is very, very fulfilling. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think we're all really excited now that it's fourth quarter yeah. and ev sales are <laughs> ramping up and people are getting started. We're really excited to see, um, what sellers are able yeah. to make the most of this yep. really profitable season. So that's all the questions I yep. had for you. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I think I just I would just encourage everybody to kind of look at look at what it is that we have to offer and and uh, just give it a try. I mean that's the best thing is it's it's low cost and print on demand is a low barrier to entry, and so you can get started very quickly and just try. Yeah, and I would say there's never been a better time to yeah, kind of get into true. the industry. Yeah, that's true. So if you're interested in getting started, visit GoQuadra.com. We'll put a link in the bio, um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, could you do me a huge favor and like this video? Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got tons of great content there. And if you want to connect with us on social media, check out the links in the description. And we look forward to seeing you there.